and access to vaccines. I don't want to belabor this point too much about the waiver at the WTO, but I do want to make the point that, and let me start it off maybe with the issue of partnerships. And I, I think uh, my brother, uh, Charles Michel, spoke about partnerships. As Africans, we would like partnerships to be based on mutual respect. And we are the first to say we want to have a good and effective and enduring partnership with Europe and indeed with others as well. But qu quite often we find that there is a bit of paternalism that underpins the relationship between us. I'll give you a very good example. After Omicron uh, was announced, I was due to travel to West Africa. And in traveling uh, in the wake of Omicron, I received calls from the four presidents that I was going to travel to, President Makisal, Buhari, Watara, uh, as well as uh, Akufunana. And they said, we've heard about this Omicron. Omicron, are you still coming? We want you to come. What can we do to help? And and I said, President, 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 if you still relax about our coming, we are coming. A plain load of us, together with journalists, we got on the way. Before I left, I also got some calls from Europe. And the calls were so paternalistic. They were saying, hello, President Ramaphosa, we've heard about this Omricon. I am sorry to tell you that we are banning travel to Europe from South Africa and Southern Africa. No discussion, no attempt to hear what our views are. And I'm saying that the relationship is to, needs to be mutually respectful. We need to respect one another. The African presidents respected me as we respect one another. But from Europe, I just got a message of saying, we've banned travel. Thank you. Goodbye. See you next time. That's not the way to conduct relationship. So there, there needs to be consensus. There needs to be discussion. And I want to talk about the issue of access to vaccines. We have made a proposal which is supported by more than 100 countries. And what we have said is we want, and this comes back to what the youth were saying as well. They want to know whether they have a continent, which will help to develop their skills where they can thrive. But what do we want? We want to be able to make our own vaccines. And we will deal with the issue of reluctance uh, for our Africans to take vaccines. But we want to make vaccines. We don't just want to fill and finish and package, which is what we are being offered. That we want you to build capacity to fill, finish, and package, and uh, we will send you the drug substance. And we say, no, we want you to relax the intellectual property rights for a while so that we can make the drug substance because we have the capability. And there are quite a number of countries on the continent that can. <laughs> and right now, we've got countries like Egypt, Nigeria, uh, Ghana, Senegal, Rwanda, South Africa, and Kenya, easily they have the capability, the manufacturing capability, and we are saying we want to be able, to, we want to go beyond just getting the substance from Europe or wherever, filling and distributing. We want to make the drug substance because that is where the intellectual property resides. And that is where we want our young people who are epidemiologists, who are scientists, to see that there is a future for them. Then they will not go to Europe. They will not go to America. They will stay here because they will know that they can work effectively and display all the skills we have. Now, what does the, world, the, the, the northern part of the world do? They say, no, we know what is good for you. We just want you to do fill and finish. 
and that's it. And we say, no, we no longer want that. You did that long ago when you colonized us. And when you raped and pillaged our countries, we're saying, no, now we have the capability and we want to make all these things ourselves. Now, now for me, that is smart partnerships. We want to deal with Europe. We want to deal with the northern part of America and so forth on a respectful basis. We, as Africans, are respectful and have always been. And maybe that's where our mistake is. That's why we were colonized uh, in the way that we were colonized, because we respect too much. And we say, respect us as well. Now, <laughs> coming to the question you raised, there are quite a number of issues that we have to embark upon for our recovery. Obviously, we have to improve our health systems. And I, I, I reject the notion that no, we, we, you can't really have the vaccines because you don't have good health systems. It is the COVID-19 that is enabling us, that is giving us the way with all to move forward to improve our health systems. So it cannot be conditional. We will improve our health systems as we are dealing with COVID because every crisis in the end does yield its own benefits. And they say, right now, it's a crisis, and we are coming up with various methods of improving our health systems. The second one, obviously, is economic uh, recovery, the integration of our continent, precisely what we are working on. And the other one, of course, is the, the whole process of industrializing and uh, building a manufacturing base. And this is where the North looks down on us. They say, no, you don't have, you know, the way with all and all that. And we say, we are building it. And the other one is infrastructure. The infrastructure build that you are seeing here in Senegal is phenomenal. This is a country on the move. And Africa is on the move. We are improving ourselves. So we want the world to recognize us to recognize that. And the other issue is access to finance. You know, another injustice that happens is this. The northern part of the world, the rich countries, have been able to borrow trillions, trillions of dollars to deal with this pandemic. But they are borrowing at almost zero, zero interest rates. When we borrow, we borrow at high interest rates. In my own country, for instance, we've got a growing deficit because most of our revenue goes towards paying debt. And we are saying we want to borrow on really pre preferential, including at zero interest rates, so that when we get funding, we are able to use it for developmental needs. And that is why the limitations that are placed by financing institutions when they rate our countries is so unjust because they say you must limit your deficit to 3%. Anything that goes about that, then they rubbish your country and you can no longer borrow. So it is important that we should be given uh, the ability and the capability to raise funds. On the security side, Southern Africa is now involved in a war in Mozambique. We're fighting insurgents who are spreading and the Sahel region and so forth. And we've been in the DRC as South Africa for many, many years. We need funding because the mission of the United Nations is to ensure that there is peace in the world. And the rich countries who became rich, underline, who became rich because they plundered and pillaged the countries that they colonized. The wealth that you see in the northern countries is the wealth that comes, here, that comes from here. And we are saying live up to your responsibilities. We need funding to fight the insurgents. And therefore, yes, the world system needs to fund us so that we continue to, fund, uh, to fight the, way, uh, the, the war in, in, in our region. Lastly, the issue that is really going to be a boon for all of us is multilateralism. As Africans, we respect multilateralism. And we find that other 
parts of the world don't respect multilateralism. They usually act unilaterally. And you just hear a country as, you know, has been throwing bombs in another country without going through a multilateral system. And we are saying multilateralism is important. We want to strengthen that. And all of us should act through the multilateral system. That's what I would say would lead to a really good recovery of the world and Africa after COVID-19. Thank you very much. Thank you. Merci, merci, Monsieur le Président.